So here we're looking at the world population distribution in 2019, and these are all in millions, okay? Uh, so first we can say, well, Asia, huge, and this includes, um, I, for simplicity of the graph, I, I put together uh, East Asia, Southeast Asia, uh, South Asia, and Central Asia. So this includes a tremendous amount of land mass as well as a tremendous amount of countries, and it's about four and a half billion people, so way, way over half. Um, the second biggest group is in Africa. Um, so this is all of Africa, and this is over 1 billion people, about 1.3 billion. Um, Europe is is about uh, 700 something million. Uh, Latin America and Caribbean, so this is basically all the countries except for US and Canada, and I did it this way not because uh, that really makes a lot of sense to lump them that way, but it's the way the data was, was in the source. Um, so about 644 million, so just a little bit less in Europe, and then when you add in US and Canada, you get to 366. So if you include all of North and South America together, uh, you're talking uh, about a billion people. All right, so fast forward. What's the world going to look like in 2050 given current trends? Okay, if current trends were to, uh, as they project them, they're if they continue. So uh, Asia will be a little bit bigger, although this is kind of misleading. Uh, actually, for East Asia, East Asia is expected to shrink. Okay, um, Japan has already started to 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 have a and, and South Korea is not far behind and eventually actually China is also expected to to start to shrink in the absence of some big change in their immigration policies for these countries okay um, Europe also and, and in Asia the growth is going to be happening in South Asia so um, India Pakistan and uh, etc and countries in, in, in South Asia are still expected to grow and countries in Southeast Asia not all but most countries are expected to grow a little bit but not very fast okay this is not a very fast so for Africa we're looking at like a doubling in this in this 30-year uh, period uh, but not for the other regions and especially Asia much smaller Europe's expected to shrink which some of you might not be surprised the one you might be a little surprised at is Latin America so Latin America plus the Caribbean countries is not expected to grow much and this is because birth rates are low in latin america and i'm going to show you some data on this later a lot of people are surprised about this so birth rates used to be really high in latin america but they also used to be really high everywhere in the world as you're going to see later um, but they've fallen and they've fallen a lot so latin america is not expected to grow very much at all and then finally us and canada are expected to grow a little bit um, U.S., I believe, expectation of the growth is mostly because of immigration, uh, because both U.S. and Canada, the birth rates are getting quite low as well. If we look at it as a percent, then right now Asia is about 60% of the world's population, Europe's about 10, uh, and so on. Africa is about 17%, um, and then we've got the other two places, and we're going to see some shifting of these percents. Okay, So basically, if you grow slower than everybody else, you get smaller as a percent, and if you grow faster, you get bigger. So Africa is going to become a much bigger percentage of the world's population. And uh, Latin America is going to hold its own. It's going to grow about the average. And Europe and U.S. are going to get smaller compared to the world. Okay, So there's, so there's some shifting of the world population when some parts of, of the world grow faster than others. And we're going to see uh, what's going on in Africa. And there's kind of two things going on that's going to cause this, uh, this big, big amount of growth. So let's go ahead and look. So where is, uh, where is this natural rate of increase happening pretty fast? So this is the birth rate minus the death rate. Um, I give a link here where you can find the data, and also that links, the, you can also find the other data I showed earlier um, in the same site. So the area that has the biggest population growth, as you can see, is uh, in Africa. Okay, so the population growth rates are pretty high. I mean, maybe two, it doesn't look so high, 2 3%, two, um, but that's high. And there's only, uh, outside of there, there's only a handful of other places where that's, where it's very high. And again, most of those are found in, most of those are, are found in what's considered to be South Asia. And uh, we also have Papua New Guinea over here. Well, the, the right side is Papua New Guinea. Um, and in Europe and in North America, most of the countries are either not going to grow or they would actually be expected to shrink uh, because their birth rates are below what is considered to be uh, the the replacement rate which we'll come back to a little bit later so replacement rate 
is considered to be 2.1 um, for total fertility rate, uh, just because uh, some people may not survive. So on average, 2.1 is considered to be enough. So you have two adults, say in a family, and then if they have 2.1 children on average, then they will be replaced into adulthood by their children. Okay, this, this is the idea. So even if, so many of these countries in, in North America, um, also in Asia, we have Japan and South Korea and Thailand, their birth rates are, are far below the replacement rate and their natural rate of their, and their, sorry, their fertility rates are far below the replacement rate and they have essentially would stop growing without uh, immigration and some of these countries would actually shrink. Now, what's going on in Latin America, we're gonna find, cause I'm gonna show you birth rates later. In Latin America, we have some population increase, but it's slower. Okay, it's a lot slower than Africa, and it's also mostly quite a bit slower than um, South Asia. The other thing we have going on here is this is mostly inertia. Okay, this is mostly caused by the fact that birth rates used to be high, and so they're still relatively young populations. And when you have a relatively young population, then your population will continue growing for some time because you have a lot of people who are still in the age where they're going to have children. Okay. Uh, so, but it's mostly inertia. There's not, not much, this is not really being caused by high birth rates, as we're going to see later. Um, just another, another example of China. Um, China is uh, still increasing, but this is all inertia. This is still because the generations from the, um, the generations who were born in 19, 1970s and especially 1980s are still having children, and, but this is expected to slow down quite quickly um, soon. Okay. Um, so anyways, most of the population growth, as we showed in the other thing, is happening in Africa.